Merry Christmas. My name is Matt, and I'm the campus pastor for our Ventura location here at Cross Point. Thanks for joining us for this beautiful Christmas morning. We hope that you guys have had great fun with your family, uh, either coming to our Christmas Eve service last night or celebrating today. But we want today to be something really special and fun for you. So we have one song and then a special Christmas message for you to hear. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Christmas with us. around the table so much to be thankful for it's Christmas oh how I've missed this through the joy and laughter you can feel the sadness cause this Christmas everyone's not with us it's the time of year Happiness and cheer will be enough to get me through the night. I need a wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, who's strong enough to carry me.
Merry Christmas, my friends. On behalf of our family to all of you, we just want you to know how much we love you and we pray that you are very, very blessed on this Christmas day. Today, I wanna to read my favorite Christmas verse to you. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. See, the government will rest on his shoulders. You know, when it comes to politics, the stable that Jesus was born in, it wasn't draped in an American flag. See, it's not about an elephant or a donkey. It's about a lamb. He even trumps all the government. He's called the Wonderful Counselor. Listen, are you needing advice, wisdom, counsel? Do you need support? He says, come to King Jesus. And he's the mighty God. He's bigger and stronger than any fear that you are facing today. Everlasting Father, maybe you've been disappointed or let down by your father. You know, the role of a father is protector and provider, and God says, I'm your good, good father. He's also the Prince of Peace. You know, in a world filled with trouble and tension and uncertainty, you can rest in his peace. Jesus didn't promise that it would be easy, but he did promise that he would be there to help you. You know, that you would have expected him to show up in a palace, but he was born in the stable. And just like in Israel, his plan is to give you peace in this holiday season is more than you can even imagine. You know, we fast forward to today and I see people who just don't have much peace. I mean, even people that go to church are just stressed out all the time, just anxiety and tension. And I see Christian marriages and you think, okay, they know Jesus, she knows Jesus, they, they should have a peaceful marriage. And yet studies show that just as many followers of Jesus marriages end up in divorce as non-Christian marriages. You know, some studies say that sometimes there's even more followers of Jesus get divorced than others. You know, I, I look at people that I know financially and some people make far more money today than they've ever had in their whole lives. And yet there's more financial pressure than they've ever had. Where is the peace in that? I look at the relational tension. You know, people just can't get along and you can't even pull into a mall parking lot without somebody flipping you off on Christmas. You know, where is the peace in that? You turn on the news and what do you see? Car bombing, school shooting, countries at war. I started to ask myself, if Jesus is the Prince of Peace, did he fail? I don't wanna sound like a heretic or anything. Have you posting comments saying, crucify Brian, that's not my goal. But it is a little bit difficult for me to reconcile. If he's the Prince of Peace, did he fail? Ultimately, I think it depends upon how do you define peace? See, I've always thought that that peace would be the thing that would remove my anxiety or peace that would calm me when I'm disturbed. But when we study Jesus, the Prince of Peace, we find he's so much more than just that. So who is Jesus? Among many other names, Jesus was called the Prince of Peace. In Hebrew, it's the word Sar Shalom. Let's talk about those words. Sar, it means the one who is in charge. It means he's the captain. 
It means he's the Lord. It means he's the chief. It means he's the general. As I so often like to say, it means he's the boss, the coach, and the CEO. And the Romans, they used the word Tsar, and it became Caesar. Then it became Caesar, like Julius Caesar. It was the one that was in charge. See, Jesus is the Tsar. He's the captain, the chief, the Lord. And what does Shalom mean? Shalom was actually a greeting that one person would give to another. So Shalom means rest. It means tranquility. It means wholeness. It means completeness. Jesus is the Tsar Shalom. On this Christmas day, can you just rest that he is the Tsar Shalom? You could say he's the captain of rest. He's the Lord of tranquility. He is the chief of contentment. Jesus is the Tsar Shalom. And as long as we are under Jesus Christ, we can have his peace. Now, does that mean we can do anything we want and still have peace? Well, of course not. You know, you can't get into a big hairy fight and go ballistic and call each other names in your marriage and embarrass, you know, the kids and then all of a sudden expect to have the peace of God. Why? Because you're outside of the Tsar Shalom. Can a person charge up all their credit cards and spend more money than they make and then just expect to have peace? No, because you're outside of the will of the Tsar Shalom. It's only when we're under the Lordship of the Tsar, the one who is in charge, that we experience his peace. Jesus is the Tsar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. The amazing thing is when we're under the Lordship of Christ, he can give us a peace that most people don't understand. When your private world has fallen apart, Jesus can give you an inward peace that goes beyond human understanding. And just as the Tsar Shalom can give you peace, he can also take that same peace away. You say, why would he do that? Because he's the Tsar Shalom. He's the Prince of Peace. He can remove your peace to get your attention. He may remove your peace to bring you closer to him. But remember, he is the Lord of Peace, the Prince of Peace. He is the Tsar Shalom. So at all of our campuses today, could you just help me out? Who is he? Say it out loud. He is the Tsar Shalom. He's the Lord. He's the general. He's the chief of Shalom. Peace is more. Shalom is more than just peaceful, more than just an easy feeling you get. It's a completeness. It's a wholeness. It's a tranquility. It's a rest. He is the Lord or the Prince of Peace. And when you're under him, you can experience his peace. But when you step outside of his will and his way, you may not experience his peace. So today, I want to challenge you to declare him as the Sar Shalom. Now remember this, peace, it's not the absence of tension, trouble, or, trans or transition. It's the awareness that the Sar Shalom is with you in the middle of the uncertainty, and he's in total control. You know, I wanna leave you today with the number one highlighted verse on all of the YouVersion Bible app, and there's literally hundreds of millions of people that use this app every day, and the number one verse highlighted in all the history of that Bible app is Philippians chapter four and verse six and seven. It says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. He is the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Rick. I'm our Brea Campus pastor here at Cross Point. Thank you so much for joining us this Christmas morning as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Hey, as we come to the end of the year, uh, we want to share this one last opportunity to give to our Faith, Hope, and Love Christmas offering. Uh, here at Cross Point, we are passionate about local and global compassion, and we have so many initiatives for next year that we want to see God move in our communities and around the world. So if you would visit crosspoint.com give, that's one spot that you can give back and see God work in a powerful way this coming year. Thank you guys again so much for joining us. Have a great and Merry Christmas. Thank you.